Okay, before we get into anything, I have to share something with y'all. So I've been like getting, okay, this is a little girly, but I have to share. I've been getting my nails done with my mom since I was like five years old. That's just something that we do together. And um, anytime I like get a certain color, I get that color because God will share with me a message that relates to a color. And then in any time, like it's kind of like a girl thing where pe- girls will come up and say, I love your nails. And I'll say, man, thanks. Let me tell you about them. And I get to tell them about the message that God put on my heart. And so I want to share with y'all the message of my nails <laughs> this morning because I am believing this over your life. So before we get into anything, I'm going to share a nail story with you. So I've been reading the book of Judges lately, okay? And in Judges 6, um, well, I'll back up a little bit. Okay, in Judges 6, the Israelites have forgotten the Lord. That, like, it makes me want to cry just to think about forgetting the Lord. But we tend to do it in our own way all the time as well. But they forgot the Lord. They turned from him and did evil in his eyes. And being a just God, he said, okay, If that's what you're wanting to seek first, if that's really what you want, I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to let you serve the the gods of of Baal. I'm going to let you prostitute yourselves to them. I'm going to let you have what obviously you're showing me you want. And so he removed his provision and protection from the Israelites. And so they fell into captivity, and the Midianites were holding them in oppression. So for a while, the Israelites are just in complete anguish. And so they cry out to God, God, we're so sorry. Please come and save us. And because God is not only a just God, but he's also a loving God who is slow to anger and he's so gracious and compassionate and abounding in love, he sends a judge to come and rescue them. And I love this because this is where Gideon comes in and this is where the color comes in. So Gideon, he is the lowest member of the lowest family of the lowest tribe of Israel. And he walks as though that's who he is. He's bound down in insecurity, and that is his identity. His identity is, I'm not enough because this is what my family looks like. I'm not enough because this is my position. I'm not enough because this is who I am seen in the eyes of man. And so Gideon is bound in fear, and he's hiding behind a wine press. Y'all, you don't hide behind a wine press. That's not what you do, okay? So that's why I picked this color. I picked the color wine of wine because Gideon is hiding behind this wine press. While in the meantime, there's this battle happening out in the field of the Israelites against the Midianites. But Gideon's not out there like a good old stud of a man because he's so insecure about who he's not hiding behind this wine press. But I love that God loves us so much. He's willing to meet us where we are, but he loves us way too much to leave us there. And he sees us even in the midst of our insecurity, even in the midst of our fear, even in the midst of our position. And he says, yep, I want to use you. Not because I have to, not because he's obligated to. He's God. He could save his people in any way he wanted to, but because he wants for us to play a part in this beautiful story. And he wanted Gideon to be a vessel of his glory, and he wanted Gideon to lead his people, because God can just do that because he's God. So an angel of the Lord comes to Gideon behind the wine press and says, hey, you mighty warrior. And Gideon actually goes, pardon me, my Lord? I always think that that's kind of funny. Pardon? Pardon? I don't think I've ever told someone, pardon me? (laughs) But I feel like I may start doing that just for fun. But he goes, pardon me, my Lord? And he goes, the angel of the Lord says, yes, I am speaking to you. I have called you to deliver my people out from the oppression of the Midianites. And Gideon goes into this whole spiel about how the Lord just hasn't been there. He's like, God, I know that you were there with us whenever the Egyptians were holding us into captivity and you came and you rescued us and you led us through the Red Sea and you were faithful. But where have you been all of these years as we've been held captive. And God is, <laughs> I love God. He's the angel of the Lord says, go in the strength that you have. Am I not sending you? There is freedom that takes place. And the biggest relief 
whenever you realize that God is not calling you because of the things that you've done or not done. He's calling you because he is who he is. And he's simply looking for a willing heart. And notice that he didn't come to Gideon and say, fearful one, fearful one. Or, hey, you worrier, insecure one. No. (laughs) No. He said, mighty warrior. God sees you for who he's called you to be. And so I just wanted to encourage you all to don't hide behind the wine press because of what people have spoken over your life or because of what your past looks like. But I think it's time to step out behind the wine press and just go in the strength that you have, knowing that God will provide you and equip you with what he's, to, so that you may walk in what he's called you to walk in. Because y'all are mighty warriors, and I believe in you. Yes, yes. Okay, will y'all, will you mighty warriors bow your heads with me? <laughs> Dear God, man, I love you. I love you so much, and I love, I love what you're doing in the hearts of these precious leaders, and I am so humbled that I get to be here with them. And Lord, I just, I pray in Jesus' name that you come and have your way. I thank you so much that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. And where your spirit is, there is freedom. For we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. I pray that our hearts may like a, be like a, a plowed field that is ready to receive the seed of your word that will not return void. And I pray that it takes root. I pray that you do in us this morning what only you can do. I thank you so much, God, that you are Yahweh. And you surround us with yourself as with a shield. And you lift our heads high when we are bowed low in shame. I thank you so much, God, that those who look to you are radiant. in their faces are never covered with shame. I thank you that you guide us always. That you satisfy our need in a sun-scorched land and you strengthen our frame. That because of you, we are like a well-watered garden. Like a spring whose waters never fail. Lord, I thank you so much that I don't have to worry about what to say or how to say it because I know that at that time it won't even be me speaking, but it will be you speaking through me. And so, Lord, I just pray that you come and take over and may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Man, I am so glad that y'all are here. Can y'all, like, take a deep breath with me? Okay, I'll let it out. We're going to breathe in some love and cast out some fear. Okay, we're going to go do it two more times. Okay, ready? It's good to remember to breathe. (laughs) Yep, 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 it is. Okay, awesome, awesome, stellar folks. We're going to start this morning in Exodus 3, and I am pumped, (laughs) pumped. Okay. So starting at the very beginning in Exodus 3, it says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. I'm going to pause there. Isn't it so cool that it says, when the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look. The Lord is looking for a heart that is willing to be obedient to him. He's looking for a heart with spiritual curiosity. Are you eager to see what God is doing? Are you eager to see how he can use you? Are you eager to say, God, here I am, send me? The Lord simply saw that Moses was curious at what this could possibly be. And he said, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. God said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. 
The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. That are so fun to say. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way of the Egyptians are oppressing, are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Who, who am I? that you would want to use me. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that is that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. <laughs> Y'all, any door that God opens, no man can close it. If God has called you to walk in the plan that he has to prosper you and not to harm you, and you say, yes, God, here I am, send me, no matter what comes your way, no, no weapon formed against you will prosper. That doesn't mean weapons won't be formed against you, but they won't prosper. God says, do not fear. I am sending you. Therefore, this is going to work. It's going to be good. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? And then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. I think, it's, I think it's really interesting how <laughs> Moses said, who am, who am I that, that you would send me? And he later goes on to say, but God, I, I have a speech impediment. Like, I can't even talk well. I am almost positive that when he said that, God didn't go, Gabriel, did you know that? I sure don't. I, man, that really changes my plans. That was really, man, now he, he can't part the Red Sea now because I, I didn't know he had a speech impediment. <laughs> Y'all, the Lord knows he made you fearfully and wonderfully, and he has entrusted you with the gifts that you have to walk out the purpose that he has called you to walk out. And the things that are your weaknesses, they're not going to hinder you. Because in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses because his grace is sufficient and it is through my weaknesses that his strength will be made perfect. It's like through my strengths and through my weaknesses, he's glorified. And so any excuse that I'm thinking to come up with, it's, it's not from the Lord. <laughs> it's like in Matthew 4. Jesus had just gotten baptized, and he goes into the wilderness for 40 days. And the enemy comes to tempt him in the wilderness. And he comes, and he tries to tempt him in three different ways. But you know what I love? Every single time the enemy came to tempt Jesus, Jesus always responded with the word of God. He said, it is written. Whenever the enemy came and tempted him to come and turn this rock into bread, Jesus said, you know, it is written that man shall not live on bread alone, but from every mouth that comes from the word of God. Do you know who God says you are? Do you know what his word says about you? Because I'm telling you, the world is going to tell you everything that you're not. And in Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may be able to test and approve what God's good, pleasing, and perfect will is for your life. And I can only do that when I know his truth and I walk out his truth. I've been told a lot of things that I'm not. I got told last week that I had a mental illness because of how I act. And so it's like, okay, didn't, 
didn't Paul say in 2 Corinthians that we are, if we are known to be out of our minds, it is for the glory of God? Hmm, yes, he did. Yes, he did. I've been told that my eyebrows look like caterpillars. I've been told that my nose is too big. I've been told that my singing makes people's ears bleed. I've been told that my smile is cringy. I don't even know what cringy means, but I've seen that word a whole lot of times. But guess what? It is written that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that my God knit me together in my mother's womb, and every day of my life he ordained in his book before one of them came to be. He says in Genesis 127 that he made me in his image, in the image of God, he made me. Do you know who God says you are? Whenever you feel out of place in this world, your heart is in the right posture. Because if you ever feel like you're fitting in or feel like you are a part of it, then it's okay. I I need to have a self-check. Because you're called to be set apart in the world but not of it. Jesus said, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. So it's going to make sense that when God calls you to do something, it's not going to go in line with what the world has told you. He's going to call you to do things that's going to push you out of your comfort zone. He's going to call you to do things that you never thought that you would do because of what your past looks like. Moses, he had just killed a man. But notice that God didn't come up to him saying, murderer, murderer. He called him by name and said, Moses, Moses. Because God saw him for who he made him to be, not who the world claimed him to be. God named you before the world ever had an opportunity to speak over you. And it is his word that doesn't fail. No word from God will ever turn void. I love how in Isaiah 55, it says, just as the rain falls from the heavens, and it it doesn't return back to the heavens until it has nourished the earth and allowed budding and flourishing to take place, so does God's word not leave his mouth and return back to him until fulfilling the purpose for which it was sent. It is written And I think that it was such a crucial part of the Lord telling Moses who he was because Moses needed to experience truly the truth that will set you free so that he could lead other people in freedom. He was about to go and lead an entire nation in freedom. How could he do that if he didn't even know who he was? As leaders of God, it is so important that we know who God has called us to be. Does that just make you smile? (laughs) Fast forward a little bit, and they're at the Red Sea. And Moses has got this stick. I I wonder what people came up to him doing. Okay, the, the, the Israelites are at the Red Sea, and all of the Egyptians in, like, their chariots, they're coming up behind them, and the Israelites are coming to Moses. What are we going to do? I don't know, but I got a stick. <laughs> what are you going to do with stick? I don't know. Maybe I'm going to lift it in the air. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like all you got is a stick, and it's going to look weird. It's not going to make sense to the world but you got your stick. And I'm going to lift it up, and the Lord is going to do what only he can do through your willingness. The Lord did what only he could do through the boy who brought five fish and two loaves of bread. Like, he, he's just wanting your whole heart. And through your wholehearted willingness to be obedient, he will split seas so that you can not only walk in freedom yourself, but you can lead nations to walk in freedom. I believe that there are freedom leaders in this room. Not only has God called you to personally walk in freedom, but he's called you to lead nations to walk in freedom. And I'm so excited about it. I'm stoked. Like, I'm so excited. So they're, okay, they're walking through the red, they're walking through a sea on dry ground. Moses had a speech impediment. God isn't hindered by your weakness. They're walking through the sea on dry ground. And fast forward, I love this. Fast forward, um, they've been walking through the wilderness for quite a while now. And the Lord had promised the people a promised land. He had promised it to them. So Moses, Moses collects 12 spies. 
He says, okay, y'all, I want you to go into the promised land, and I want you to scope it out. In the meantime, there are giants that are occupying this territory. He said, but I need you to go spy out this land. I need you to come back to me and give me a report. What do you see? How, how are the grapes growing? What does the land look like? Just give me all the details. So they go. And when they come back, 10 of them are full of fear. They have forgotten what the Lord has promised them. They have forgotten that God's word does not return void. And they come back saying, oh, there's no way. There's no way that we can go and walk in what God has already promised us because it is scary. (laughs) But there's this one man. There's this one man, and his name is Caleb. And Caleb comes back saying, oh, no, for surely, for surely we can walk into this land. Not because it didn't look scary, but because he believed that the Lord would come through and that the Lord would lead them on level ground because when the Lord is continually set before you and he is at your right hand you will not be shaken and so I want to leave y'all with Psalm 46 in Psalm 46 it says God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Okay, (laughs) This is, this is so cool. So we've just read that the earth, is gonna, the earth is giving way, the mountains are falling into the heart of the sea, the waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. I'm almost positive that whenever Caleb went into that promised land, it seemed as though mountains were falling. It didn't look like it was going to be good because sometimes it doesn't look good in the scene. That is why we do not set our eyes on what is seen but on what is unseen, because we know that what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. But if you continue reading, it says, Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. How powerful. They hadn't yet seen the victory. Sometimes in our lives, we don't actually see the victory right before us. But how powerful is it when we sing and declare, come and see what God has done. Like Caleb came back and said, hey, we can surely keep going because I know we haven't seen it with our own eyes yet, but the victory is ours. And I pray that we may be a people that step out from behind the wine press Believe that in our weaknesses, the the Lord's strength is made perfect. And he has called us by name, not by what we've done. And because of that, we can walk in freedom and we can lead other people to walk in the same. Will you all bow your heads with me? Dear God, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you that you say, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in spirit. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I thank you for the easy yoke and the light burden that we can walk with when we're walking in you, because we know that we are not walking in our own strength. For our flesh and our heart may fail, but you are our strength and our portion forever. Therefore, it is so fitting to sing to you, and it is so fitting to praise you, because your mercies are new every morning, and we are able to walk in what you have called us to walk in, because we have been given every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms to allow us to be who you have called us to be. I pray over these mighty warriors, God, and I pray that if there is any area of their life that they have hidden behind a wine press because they don't believe that you can use it, because they believe that it disqualifies them, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And I declare your light that shines in the darkness and that cannot be overcome. And I pray, Lord, that we may be a people that let our light so shine before all men 
so that they may see our good works and glorify you, not us, you who is in heaven. For we are your cities on a hill that cannot be hidden. And I thank you that just as you do not put a lamp in a house and put a bowl over it so it doesn't give light to the house. No, you, you allow it to shine to fill up the whole house with your light. And I pray, Lord, that we may be the light of the world that you have called us to be. Even if it feels like all we have is a stick, I pray, Lord, that we may bring it to you knowing that you will part seas with it. Lord, we are yours, and we rejoice in getting to be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. I love (laughs) y'all.